Now we can hear ourselves. Good, Phil. Very good. Hello, Nico. It's great to see you, Phil. It's uh, I, I I love these live broadcasts because you always forget to unmute yourself, and uh, you know this is this is how it goes. So um, let me just just recap our wonderful introduction. So thank you for joining the very special Home Office Talks from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This week and every day, we'll take a look at behind the scenes of the amazing collaboration between the NHL team Pittsburgh Penguins, the Carnegie Mellon University, and Covestro. And this collaboration is all about ice hockey, the greatest sport in the world, ask any fin, and how to make the game safer with great new ideas and high-tech materials. And... Thanks for joining us, um, Phil, uh, commentator for the Penguins and a two-time Stanley Cup winner just a few years back. You know, it's it's just like feels like yesterday, Phil, right? <laughs> well, it's actually the 30th anniversary of our first Stanley Cup in 1991. So, uh, feels like yesterday might be a little bit of a stretch, but uh, you know, since 1991, the Penguins have won five Stanley Cups. Nobody has won more. Chicago has won three. They won three in five years, but. Penguins, uh, it's it's known as the city of champions for a reason. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you you talk from experience, so you know you can you can give some tips to the current crew. Before we kick off our conversation about the Makeathon, let me remind you that you, you can comment, ask questions, and make protests on this live cast by typing in your comments on this channel. We'll see, react, and respond to them nearly real time with Phil. But before we begin, let's take a quick recap into the achievements of this collaboration so far. And I will push buttons on my <laughs> wonderful studio and off we go. A leading materials producer, a world-class university, and a hockey team with a history of winning championships. In 2018, the Penguins teamed up with Covestro and Carnegie Mellon University for a groundbreaking collaboration with one goal in mind, to impact the safety of the game without impacting how it's played. The result? New discoveries and even new prototypes to advance safety innovation in hockey for players at all levels. In March of 2018, the inaugural Rethink the Rink kicked off the world's first hockey makeathon, a week long workshop hosted at Carnegie Mellon University's Makers Space. As the only sport with a hard physical boundary, the dasher boards that line a hockey rink were the perfect project. The challenge? Increase their overall safety without impacting how the puck plays off the boards. In less than four days, teams of students using Covestro materials and guided by their material experts designed, developed, and prototyped safe dasher board solutions and presented their ideas. The winning design was refined with the help of dasher board manufacturer Athletica and tested using an automotive standard just outside Detroit, Michigan. Firing in three, two, one. These new dasher boards have since been installed at the Covestro Innovation Rink at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex and underwent further testing. The hope is to continually evaluate its overall performance with the goal of expanding these new dasher boards to rinks all around the world, including NHL arenas. One year later, the Penguins and Covestro were back on CMU's campus for year two of Rethink the Rink, this time focusing on goalie masks. The challenge was to develop a material solution that increased player protection without inhibiting performance, and the results astounded judges. Goalie helmet prototypes inspired by technology and car airbags, and the winning design inspired by rams and woodpeckers, some of nature's most self-protecting creatures. The results even captured the attention of experts from world-renowned hockey equipment manufacturer Bauer Hockey, and the winning prototype is now in testing with a goal of commercialization in one or two years. Expectations entering the hat trick year of Rethink the Rink were high, and CMU students met the moment. Year three's makeathon focused on a player's shoulder and elbow pads. The hope was to create a solution that would make them even lighter with a greater range of motion and flexibility while protecting more of the hockey player. After a week of ideating with Covestro and Penguins equipment staff, even a pandemic pause and a quick shift to a virtual presentation ceremony couldn't keep the momentum from flowing. The results and ideas were astounding, again, piquing the interest of Bauer Hockey. Now the winning prototype is in the early stages of evaluation and development of the manufacturer and yet another 
tangible success story resulting from this brilliant partnership. Now here we are, gathering together both safely in person and virtually throughout the week for year four of Rethink the Rink with this annual Makeathon event. The goal is the same, make hockey a safer sport to play for players of all levels without impacting how the game is played. And as always, we look forward to seeing the results. Good luck, everybody. So, wow. Uh, Phil, as, as someone who really knows the reality on the ice, what are your thoughts uh, when you watch this recap? It's three years, and you have been a part of the three yeah. years. Yeah, all three. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect the first year when uh, we were trying to develop the boards and, and make it safe not only for NHL players, but for all players, men and women, boys and girls. Um, and my son's a, a hockey player, so I had a vested interest in this, even though he is a goalie and doesn't you know, get his head rammed through the boards uh, that often. Um, I, I'm just I'm blown away that everybody can get so on board with this. Uh, it, it's uh, To me, it's one of those things where I think in a boardroom, it sounds like a good idea, but then when you really try to uh, apply it, uh, to get everybody on board and on the same page really was incredible. And so once I was able to get into that that room at Carnegie Mellon and, and listen to some of the other speakers, I had prepared myself, obviously, to, to speak, but it really helped to ha have a couple of people go before me, the team doctor, Dr. V, to go before me. Uh, I, I realized, wow, this, this has a lot of legs to it. And then once I got to speak to the students, I knew just how important it was. Thanks, thanks, Phil. Um, and, and of course, this year is is very special. Um, even though the pandemic situation is is getting better, this is a, a virtual uh, microthon, and of course, better safe than sorry. So, Phil, can you talk about uh, what is this year's focus um, and, and why? Uh, and it's helmets uh, that we have learned already. Why is this helmet topic so important? Well, because uh, I mean, and first of all, Bauer is an incredible company, and somebody that's not really into hockey or hockey equipment, you don't know what Bauer is. Bauer's been around a long, long time. And, uh, you know, they were known basically just for their skates. Real quick story. When I was a kid, uh, I took a field trip up to Kitchener, Ontario, uh, where Bauer's factory was. And I remember coming home with some of the materials that they gave us from the skates that they made. Uh, and I'll never forget that. It was such a big deal for me, just an impressionable young kid. But now they've really branched out into equipment, and they've been really so important to help us along here. But helmets are why they're so important, because I don't think, to be quite frank and honest with you, I don't think the advancement for the safety of helmets has been quick enough. It's been very slow. And I understand there's certain rules and regulations you have to follow. Just because you have a great idea doesn't mean you can snap your fingers and it can be applied. Uh, because no matter wh whether you're living in Canada or the U.S., the regulations are, are very different on how you have to get that stamp of approval. With that being said, players have changed on, the, on what they want. Uh, you know, back when I played 25 years ago, basically whatever came out of the wrapper or out of the box, I took and I put on and I wore sometimes that night. Now, players, I'm not going to say they're they're spoiled, but they are a little bit more privileged, Nico, than, than I was, where they want things a certain way. They want everything to be custom made. And that takes time. And it's tough to just kind of rubber stamp everything and throw a blanket over and say, okay, this is the model we're going to have. But then when you have players say, no, 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 I need to tweak this way and tweak that way because they want that customization. They want that comfort. So it, it's, it's really a challenge. Uh, but really, my biggest thing is here we are in 2021. I just feel like, we should be safer as a hockey community with protecting the old noggin up here. Uh, it's it's moved along. It's getting better, but it's been very slow. And it's it's, it's great to hear, uh, Phil, kind of from your experience, from what equipment people grew up with and where they are now, um, how much high tech is actually possible with today's materials. Um, of course, you know, being over 50 myself, I can also remember in Finland, you know, playing hockey with, uh, you know, whatever you had and now trying out the latest from Bauer, it's 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 uh, really, really like an armor. Nico, let me interrupt you for a second because I have my old bucket right here. <laughs> this, this, is, this is the old Jofa. Oh, and, no. Yeah, this is the old Jofa, I think the 235 model, which if 
I, I don't yeah. have my glasses on right now because I'm also f over 50, but there's a little <laughs> sticker. You can see it on the inside here. It said, this helmet is not to be worn in the game of ice hockey. It was yeah. made for a uh, Swedish broom ball, which was not a whole lot of contact. And you can see, I can basically squeeze it together here. Uh, right. Uh, there we go. Squeeze it together. This offered no protection at all. But I was a young 20-something-year-old kid that was brash and brave and, and everything else and cavalier, and the league did not protect me from me, Nico. They should not allow me to wear this helmet. I had over 10 concussions in my life. Some of them were because of hockey and because of the impact to my head. Other were because of other things that happened. But uh, that was the helmet I wore, and now it's, it's not allowed in the league anymore. Yeah, and, and for a good reason. I, I think uh, the players need to be protected from themselves and, you know, over-enthusiastic players who don't think about their own safety as, as much as they could. Um, and it's great to see we have already a great audience. Um, Efrain from Peru. I hope you're playing hockey in Peru, Efrain. And uh, here's a great opportunity to ask an, an experienced NHL hockey player uh, questions. Um, one one question, Phil, I, I want to ask you because now that that... that in the past years, we have been able to work with the students. Now we kind of, kind of have to discuss the topic, also discuss materials, discuss the challenges of play in, in a virtual kind of way. Um, I, I have some pictures. Um, I can show what it looks like right now. So these are fresh pictures from today where uh, we were having um, presentations with, uh, with the Covestro experts and also you were one of the presenters. So, so, so Phil, looking, looking at, at this year's um, Makeathon and the virtuality of it. Can can you live with it? I mean, are there any upsides of not being there, or only downsides? Oh boy, you're you're really challenging me to come up with the upsides, and I yeah. I don't really have one uh, because I miss the interaction, I miss the face to face, uh, I miss the demonstration in front of these incredible students and watching their brains just turn and think and and you're right and hello to Spain hello to Peru and and yes there was a lot of students that came from countries that had no idea what hockey was but they have a bit of an engineering a bit of a I can fix anything type of mentality and so I miss that back and forth and uh, you know when I was giving my presentation I thought I would just give my presentation and then there would be a Q&A after no, these kids, they couldn't wait. They had to put their hands up because their their minds were, were swirling at such a high speed because they want to fix it. They want to fix it right away because that's what they do. That's the way they're programmed. That's the way they're wired, which just, it, it amazed me. And it made me, uh, it challenged me to give them more information because I could tell that they were just craving it. Yeah, and that's that's uh, the spark in the eyes. It's uh, something something uh, you, you cannot miss. Miss um, Phil, you have me now. In, you're going into the fourth year of an ice hockey makeathon. So, what do you think makes this unique partnership of a materials uh, producer and developer, a university, and, and and a professional NHL high school team? This combination of factors. What what does it make it so unique from your point of view? Well, it's just a beautiful blend. It just really, it really is. I never thought this could happen, that you could take these students who are just like sponges and just are go-getters. And, you know, the first year, if you remember, Nico, uh, in the group, I think it was around February or March. And this is usually when these U.S. college kids, they go to spring break. Now, some would go and just get crazy down in Florida, but others, you know, they go see their family and just get away from school. These kids said, no, 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 no. We don't want to go anywhere. We want to stay right in school at Carnegie Mellon because we want to be a part of the, the make -a So you take, you know, that's the basis right there. But you take Cafestro, who has all the knowledge and all the applications and all the equipment and the, su the supplies and the materials and everything, and then you take the knowledge of the Pittsburgh Penguins and, and the sport uh, and bring in former players like myself and Brian Trache and Tyler Kennedy – uh, that have been there and done that before. Uh, and you take also VPs, uh, David Morehouse, the CEO of the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Dr. V, who has become so valuable uh, yeah. with the injuries that have occurred. Why are these injuries happening and how can we how can we eliminate them? So you, you take all of these, these people with all this knowledge and then Covestro with the applications, you throw them all in the blender and you just come out with this beautiful week long or, or multi-weeks uh, people trying to cure a problem which a lot of people thought couldn't be cured.
Right. And it, it looks like we're getting a global audience. We have Jordan and Egypt. So there's going to be ice rocky rinks uh, <laughs> established in, in the Middle East uh, before, you, before you know it. Um, Phil, my, my final question before I, I let you go, because I know you have also had a busy, busy, busy day and which continues tomorrow. What are your expectations, Phil, for this group for the fourth year? What do you expect to see at the end of the week based on what you have seen this morning? I, I expect them to solve the problem within days. I mean, and, and the problem the problem is that we need to make the helmets safer so that when an eight-year-old or a 28-year-old goes headfirst into the boards, that the lack of, of the right type of padding in the helmet uh, does not cause the problem. You know, there's, there's one thing that the doctor talked about, you know, this whiplash type of thing. That has nothing to do with the actual uh, helmet itself that we're starting to problem. That's another problem that I don't know if that could ever be cured. But I, I expect them to really think outside the box, these students, and come up with the most creative way to solve this problem. I, there were some ideas. The one, just real quick, Nico, I remember when we were talking about the boards, that one of the students came up with this honeycomb uh, type of type of way to, to cushion the boards to make them safer. I was just like, that is brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant to be able to not take away from the integrity and the bounce of the boards that you need for the puck, uh, but also to make it safer and to have almost an accordion effect. I expect these, these students to do the exact same thing and make it a safer helmet. And I'm sure they're going to challenge Bauer, the company that makes one of the many companies that make helmets, challenge Bauer, but also I think motivate Bauer to come up with another way to make a safer helmet for kids, boys and girls, and also NHLers. Which is which is great. Uh, thanks, Phil, for mentioning that. As we're having uh, Bauer tomorrow, you know, on the air, talk about how how they think uh, about this. Uh, Phil, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with our online social audience, um, and uh, hope to hope to see you soon. And uh, wish you good luck in uh, working with the students for the rest of the week. Thank you. It'll be fun. Also, we're in the playoffs right now, so we have that going on. Trying to get the sixth Stanley Cup for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So. Yeah, wish us luck, and uh, I hope to see you f soon, and uh, hopefully we can uh, have a prost. <laughs> Absolutely. Vielen Dank, Phil, uh, and uh, <laughs> stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. So... That was Phil Bork. Always a pleasure listening to him and his insights uh, about hockey. Thanks again for tuning in and tune in again tomorrow at the same time when we follow up with the students and the chat with Dan Bourgeois, the VP for Product Innovation at Bauer Hockey. Bauer is looking at the students' work with a keen eye and for a good reason, as Phil just told us. So more on that tomorrow. Stay safe, stay healthy, and check in again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>